Let's talk about content. I want to make it so simple that you will have no choice but to do it today. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, YouTube Shorts, Pinterest. Okay, class is in session. How do you know what to talk about? What do you talk about if you feel like you have nothing to share or you feel like your life is boring? We're gonna break it down. People can have the same why, but people can't have the same how. You need to put that energy into your content. Now I'm intrigued. Welcome back. Let's talk about content. Hi, if you're new to this channel, my name is Ify. I'm 27. I make content all about starting your dream life, lifestyle, mindset, and just going after the things that you want in your life. And one of the best ways to push that forward I found is through content. I personally don't understand why everyone is not making content. One, personally, I am selfish and I want to see vlogs of literally everyone doing everything in their day. But two, it's the best way to push your message forward, whatever that is. I'm biased. I've loved content ever since I was a kid i was influencing before influencing was a thing like every other influencer will tell you <laughs> but almost doing it my entire life and professionally for the past four years i can tell you the sooner you start the better and that time gives you so much clarity on what you want to say this could be for entrepreneurs this could be for straight up content creators influencers this could even be just for your everyday normal person if you have something that you care about and you have even a little bit of knowledge on there is someone you could be helping there is something you could be monetizing and there is a dream life you can be creating from simply doing the things you love i feel like it's such a perfect avenue for pursuing your dreams over time you can literally get paid to document your journey or teach people what you know but before we move on i wanted to address the elephant in the room especially for new creators you might be wondering how the hell am i me a new creator going to make high quality content in the near future not to mention content that people actually want to watch trust me i've heard it all before i need this camera i need this microphone i need this studio i don't know how to edit i'm not technical at all well what if i told you you don't need any of those i genuinely feel so blessed to be born in a generation where people and companies are taking care of that for us and there's tools like riverside that do all of that for you and more it's an all-in-one platform for creators business owners entrepreneurs to make content fast and easy my fiance and i started using it for recording and editing our podcast but it slowly found its way into all of my content from long form youtube videos to short form videos i put on tiktok on instagram and it's not just for podcasting anymore it can be used as so many things for creators in my last video i gave an editing tutorial of how I edit my podcast really quick literally with the press of a button through Riverside it cuts out pauses it cuts out filler words and even improves the audio quality of your video as a youtuber especially with long-form content that can get very lengthy and very time-consuming you can use it for talking head videos to cut out any speeches and gaps I will surely be doing it with this clip right here you can also use it for short-form content which is my favorite thing because as a content creator you want to repurpose your content to as many places as possible but having to resize everything reformat everything and cut a again just for the short form content could be extra time on top of the long form and one of the coolest things is you can even use this for blog writing and written content if you want to take your video and have Riverside transcribe it you can copy and paste the transcription from Riverside and put it into ChatGPT so if you're looking to manage produce and post high quality content literally with the click of a button head to the link in my description to get 15% off of your paid subscription on Riverside be sure to use the code ifoma which is i-f-e-o-m-a and you will get that 15% off your paid plan and let's get back to the video so if you've ever been curious about content and you don't know where to start this is the video for you i create content here on youtube on tiktok and on instagram and recently last year i started a podcast which i have an entire video on how to create that if that's an avenue that's interesting to you i've not only created content for myself but also for my clients i was a social media manager for about two and a half years and i was working with my clients on all these different platforms and kind of understanding the themes behind everyone's content whether they were a solopreneur they had a small to medium-sized business or even a large company but this is really going to cover the basics of starting content this is like i have never posted anything in my life or i've only posted a few things that i can ever stay consistent for this video we're gonna go over some of the benefits how you can start creating content today and just some general tips to not forget while you're in the process and while you keep going don't forget to subscribe and let's get into the video okay so we're gonna start off by talking about the benefits of creating content and i'm not just talking about having money and fame which is what we typically see from like influencers which probably have the most popularity so that's what people think creating content is but it goes much much deeper than that and I'm gonna go over the top three that I think that the everyday person, whether you're a student, a business, solopreneur, a creator, what you can benefit from. Okay, the first thing is that it allows you to be intentional about your life. Of course, I harp on this all the time with my content and with my podcast, it's called Get Paid to Live. The really slept on benefit of content is getting to observe your life from your own point of view and from other points of view. I think when we're just living day to day without observing our thoughts, observing what we're doing, we don't really get to see how we can improve. It's maybe not as obvious to see how we can improve
move until we talk to someone, maybe a therapist, maybe a friend or a partner. But when you're creating your own content, you get to actually see your habits and your patterns and see what you want to fix, what you want to change. And then it might also inspire you to do things that you haven't done before, go after things you haven't done. Not only that, it forces you to become a better writer, a better marketer, a better storyteller, which I feel like are skills you can use in any job, any career, is being able to make things clear and concise for people to understand. And really the best way you learn is through teaching. So if you can teach people through content what you're doing, what you're saying, what you think, it's not only helping them, but it's helping you understand more what you believe or helping you get better at your craft. And it will hold you accountable. It'll make you be honest about your effort, what you believe in, what you say you believe in, show up when you say you're gonna show up, post when you say you're gonna post. The second thing is developing your personal brand. I think this is gonna become more and more important as everything is becoming digital, even for corporate people nowadays, like having a personal brand matters. Getting a job by just applying, I feel like is not only like, oh yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. Like it feels extremely rare for that to happen these days. And I feel like things like having an updated LinkedIn profile about your field, what you like to do, having the right network, talking to the right people, that is really important. For entrepreneurs, having your personal brand as a founder is super, super important. People no longer wanna buy from companies, they want to buy from people and they want to see you. Now we have access to celebrities, we have access to the president, like we have access to so many things. We wanna see who's behind the business. And I feel like it's a really good thing to rely on, especially when you're building your dream life, because if you lose a job or you wanna pivot, you have an audience to rely on. You have people who wanna back you and who support you because of what you believe in. You wanna keep documenting the journey so you always have supporters in any direction that you pivot to. And the last thing is that it helps you find opportunities you otherwise wouldn't see. Obviously having a presence in the real world and actually touching grass every so often is very good for you. But I think having an online presence is such a benefit because you have like two worlds to tap into. And it's not only because you have people supporting you, you come across opportunities you otherwise wouldn't have. There's so many opportunities I came across through content creation I don't think I would have ever found if I was just doing my job, my nine to five, my freelance client. Having my portfolio online, making content about what I do has gotten people reaching out to me. I've gotten inbound clients. I've been put on PR lists without even really trying. I think it goes back to kind of what I talk about spiritually with your dream life. When you show up as a person that you wanna be, you start to naturally attract things that you want. And I don't think that's a coincidence. When you're showing up as your true authentic self, people who like that, people who like you, who are into the same things you are into are going to find you because you're showing up as that. And when they start to see that, they want to align themselves with you. So they reach out and you guys can create jobs, you can create speaking opportunities, you can create content together, more reach. It's just so many possibilities you don't even know is possible because you haven't put yourself out there yet. And you can also find opportunities within yourself. By me just posting my content on TikTok, literally just for fun, I realized so much about myself that's created the job I have today where I run my own brand, Saint Chaison, which is a lifestyle motivational brand. Just getting into the habit of articulating my ideas over and over again taught me that there's certain themes that keep coming up in my life. And when I focus on those themes, I was like, wait, I can actually create a job from this. I can actually create a community around this. Okay, so for the real tea, how do you do it? I'm gonna give you a very simplified method. Someone who's worked with over 15 brands and individuals who make content for their business, for their personal brand, I wanna make it so simple that you will have no choice but to do it today. Although I've done this for a while, I am not an expert, I won't claim to be, but I will say I know how to get started on a platform. I've started practically all of them, except for LinkedIn, I haven't been as consistent, but as an entrepreneur now, I'm running accounts on literally all the platforms all the time. And let me tell you, if you don't take anything away from this video, please take this one tip away. Make it simple and keep it simple. You want to choose the path of least resistance in all instances. When people are like, what should I post about? Which platform should I choose? How should I make this content? How should I edit it? What hashtags to use? All these different questions can be boiled down to what is the path of least resistance for me right now? The number one problem I've seen, especially as a consultant and social media manager, is that people don't continue because they make it complicated. They overcomplicate it, they're being a perfectionist about it, they don't want to post this because they don't know they're dwelling on things they're unsure you will stay in that limbo and the only way you can learn is through posting it so posting shouldn't be seen as like oh i'm my finished product this is actually you beginning the process so when you kind of look at it that way you almost need to be in the game to be playing it posting is like throwing the basketball in the hoop of course you're not going to get it on the first try 
you're probably not gonna get it on the 10th try, but maybe on the 20th try, something happens so you get information so you can learn and get better. The key here is to do it messy, do it anyway. You don't have to have the perfect technique to start. You just need to get started so you can start learning. And the process will teach you so much more than you thinking or overanalyzing before you even begin. So I've created a simple method for you. It's called the 111 method. No, it's not angel numbers. This is just something to make it super, super simple so you actually get started. And you can probably start this today if you really wanted to. So the 111 method is one, you're gonna pick a platform, pick any platform. And the only rule here I would say is to pick a platform you're familiar with. Where do you already consume content? You wanna pick a platform that is easy for you. I find that you're probably gonna post better on a platform you're very, very familiar with. You watch a ton of YouTube videos, you probably wanna start posting on YouTube. If you're a writer, I would choose writing platforms. You could do short form platforms like Twitter, X, Threads. I know a lot of writers also post on Instagram. They'll just put text on the image. If you really like photos, you're into photography, you're into lifestyle, Instagram is a great platform. So once you have your platform, and again, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just so you can get started and get going. You're going to want to focus on one audience. I like this approach as opposed to picking a niche because if you've seen my last TikTok video, I'm not necessarily like big pro, pick a niche and get started. If that's easier for you, go forth and prosper. I do not want to harm. But if you're like me, who kind of felt a lot of resistance, which again, we're trying to avoid friction and resistance here. You don't want to hold your creativity back here because again, before you're getting good at posting and making good content, you have to get in the practice of doing it. So this is where I find experimentation and kind of letting your creativity flow a lot better. So the golden sweet spot, I like to call it, is posting what you like plus what other people like. And I find both to be incredibly important because you don't just want to post what you like and no one else finds it interesting. That won't get views or engagement, but you also don't want to just post what people like because you're just following trends, virality, or not enjoy what you're monetizing, not enjoy what you're creating, and not enjoy the community that you're building. So to get to that sweet spot, I find that you need to do a few things. And I think you have to do one before the other. So the first thing is experimentation. This is what's going to define what you like in the sweet spot equation. This is where you're going to post about things that naturally come up. And I've seen a lot of gurus say, don't just post anything. You don't want to just post random stuff because what if people don't like it? You're not getting engagement views, etc. While I do agree to an extent that you don't want to just be posting literally anything, especially if it doesn't align with you or where you want to be, I do find that posting anything is better than posting nothing. So when you're experimenting, I like to rely on things that I know have been a weekly, almost daily interest of mine. These are the things that you do day in, day out. Like they're never going to change. Like if you are consistent with your morning routine, you know that's never going to change. You could talk about this subject forever. You do it at least a couple times a week. Like these are the kind of subjects, these are the kind of things that you want to start factoring into your content so that you don't have to revolve your life around the content. Your content is revolving around your life. And I find as people we're naturally niche. So even though we think we're a bit random, like, like for me personally, I like fashion. I like mindset. I also like home decor. I also like marketing. Of course, on paper, these are all going to look like random things. But when you see them in a human being, it tends to make a lot more sense than you think. Like think about your friends, think about the people that you talk to. They're not just interested in one specific thing. And I really like how Dan Co talks about this. He's really into fitness, but he's also into spirituality and mindset and business. And when he puts it all together in his content, it doesn't seem so random and non-niche. He actually has a niche around his message, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. And I think that's the next step to this. But right now you just want to focus on the things that you like to do and why you like to do it. And the second half of that equation is what do people like from you? This is where you get to define that one audience. So I like to ask myself a couple questions here. Who am I speaking to? What do they need to hear? What do I need to tell them? Why am I speaking to them? And how does this impact their life? Like what's going to change with the information that I'm giving them? And I think you can take any interest of yours, whether it's your weekly baking, whether it's your weekly outfits, whether you're talking about your business, you can apply that interest to the one audience that you're speaking to and kind of dig deep with those four questions. And I think that framing makes every piece of content interesting. And that's really what you want to do. You want to make your interests, the things you naturally already do, interesting to people who also find that interesting. You're not speaking to everybody. Every piece of content really does have one audience. And I even like to narrow it down and think of one person who's going through something. Like what can I do to change or impact their life? Like who are they? What do they need to hear right now? Why? How am I going to make that change with my piece of content? And the hack here, if you're kind of like iffy, I still don't really know who I'm speaking to with what I want to do. I just want to post it because I like it. And I think that is a hack you can use because a lot of times we're speaking to past versions of ourselves, present versions of ourselves, and future versions. 
versions of ourselves. Like a lot of times we are our own customer. It can be as simple as I'm making my favorite matcha today and I wanna show you. And there was probably a past version of you that didn't know how to make that matcha in the way that you're doing it. And your excitement for knowing how to do that is something that would resonate with the old version of yourself. But the next thing is you are going to need a goal and a challenge. So you're gonna do one goal or one challenge. And by now you might be freaking out like I'm not ready for a challenge. I don't even know who I wanna speak to. I don't even know what I like, but this is the point. It's supposed to be messy and scary because you kind of have to get over that ick of posting and not knowing what you're doing. One of my favorite challenges I would do with all of my clients was doing a 21 day posting challenge. Now it was pretty intense. I had them post three times a day on TikTok because I feel like it's a good testing platform for like rapid volatile feedback. But you can make this just once a day. You can make it like you're gonna post three times a week, like whatever your cadence is you need to stick to it for 21 days to really get used to the idea and you can do this on a micro or macro level for instance for me my goal when i restarted youtube was to get to 100 videos before 100 videos i could not whine complain or wonder or think of course i still did all those things on tiktok that was a thousand videos for me so just kind of having some goal in mind i think gives you motivation to keep going while you're confused but it doesn't have to be that large whatever you can realistically do on your worst week i recommend doing that for 21 days so you can build the habit it. This will teach you what you need to work on, how to actively like manage the platforms that you're posting on, edit, feel the cringe that is required, and understand what you like, what you feel drawn to, what you don't feel drawn to, because a lot of times when you're just seeing content, you don't know what it really feels like to make it because you're not on the other side, how you like to film, what you like to talk about, which leads me to what the hell do you talk about? What do you post about during this challenge or just continuing on? Okay, class is in session. How do you know what to talk about? What do you talk about if you feel like you have nothing to share or you feel like your life is boring? We're gonna break it down. I prefer more natural topics or situations that come up throughout your life organically as opposed to like artificial planning and looking up trends and seeing what other people are doing. One, because I think it's extremely sustainable. You're always gonna be able to draw from a sustainable bank of content if you're doing it from organic situations. Also, it's more authentic. It speaks more to the customer. It's more natural and real. When you draw from real life experiences or problems or things you've been through. I like to focus on things you're already thinking about, talking about, or doing. So what are you already talking about with your friends? What seems to be the point of conversation? Maybe when you guys get together, you're always talking about relationships. Maybe you guys are always talking about dating. That can become advice that you give to other girls. That can become a series through your content. What are you currently going through? What do you know really well? And a lot of times we think we have to be experts at what we're going through to talk about it, but what you have is so much more than somebody else. So at any point in your stage, as long as you're acknowledging that you're in that stage of the whole process, there's going to be somebody that specifically resonates with that period that you're in. I'm a new entrepreneur and I make sure to mention that because I can resonate with other new entrepreneurs. If I was trying to pose as some million dollar entrepreneur, one that would be inauthentic and just not true, I wouldn't actually resonate with the audience I'm going after. So actually being in the unique spot you're in, whatever you're going through, whether you are starting a new business, starting a new page, starting content for the first time, and that's what you're really into. If you're new to fashion or you suck at fashion, you're a beginner at makeup, just acknowledging that actually helps you resonate more with the one audience that you're thinking of than trying to be someone you're not. What problems do you notice people are having with something that you've mastered? This will work really well for entrepreneurs. What do you know really well that other people don't? One way you can look for this is through reviews, looking at reviews on other products that are similar to the one you're selling or the one that you want to sell, talking to your customers, getting information from them, because a lot of times they're asking you what a lot of other people are thinking and making content around that. A lot of times the things that you're thinking and you never want to say or you're too scared to say are things other people are thinking as well in whatever category that you're thinking about it. If you can be that voice of reason, if you can be that person who's gonna say what other people won't say, what they're thinking, a lot of people feel relief by you just putting it out there and they will agree once they see you say it and articulate it. And then the last thing is what could you talk about for hours? What is that thing that your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your friends will be like, can you shut up about this? Like that is the best energy to put into content because here's one thing about people. They love to hear things over and over again, especially if they're into it. And they wanna have a go-to expert. They wanna have an authority figure in that topic. And if it's something niche, peculiar, very few people are talking about it, this is a perfect time for you to make a brand within it, become the authority for somebody, and actually build an audience of people who are just like you. I feel like this is the perfect chance to do that. I do have a little worksheet called the Daily Thoughts Journal. This is something I would give to my clients to help them think of ideas. It's just an exercise that basically helps you note down what you're constantly thinking about. You can think about it like a journal. I have a worksheet version of it, but you can do it in your phone, whatever note-taking app you already use. But put reminders during your day to write down what you're thinking. And over the course of like, 
month, a week, you'll notice patterns in what you constantly think about. I kind of do this through daily journaling. I'm like, I'm always talking about this same thing. Now, through all of this, your one, one, one method, through the practice, you will start to develop what I call the top of the pillar, highest of highest when it comes to content, is niching down in your message. So this is where your content becomes less about the individual things you're doing, what I eat in a day, or your outfits, or your product, and it becomes more about your overall message. This is a little bit later, and I wouldn't worry about it right now, but this is where you focus on what you're trying to say, the message you're trying to send, as opposed to a category. A lot of times when people tell you to pick a niche, they're talking about categories, which I think by definition is just a subject. It's just a part of a whole. For example, food, lifestyle, health, wellness. These things are like general categories that we often call niches, but I feel like a niche is very specific within one thing or multiple categories. I think what allows you to be understandable and digestible to an audience, but also feel free to explore and go to new bounds and still be a human being is to niche on a message. Like I mentioned, I think everybody has natural categories that they're into on a weekly basis. You're probably doing the same three to four things. But once you start to post about these things, people as well as yourself will start to notice that there's kind of a theme or vibe, like overall vibe within your page. For example, if you're familiar with Nara Smith, she's done everything from family content, she's blowing up her cooking content right now. But I think the theme throughout all of her content is doing things organically from scratch and kind of just living life in a peaceful, luxurious, natural, organic way. And I think that's a vibe that you can't necessarily recreate. Somebody can make something from scratch, somebody can make family content, people can have the same categories, people can talk about the same things, they can even have the same whys if you really think about it, because a lot of times we're like, oh, what's your why? Make sure your why is different from everyone else. People can have the same why, but people can't have the same how. And your how is your vibe. That's your overall or undertone message through your content. These are things that just stand out to people, whether you're talking about shoes, whether you're talking about food, whatever you're talking about. Like I was talking about my freaking podcast and people were like, oh my God, I gotta just go for it. I have to do what I wanna do in my life. And that made me happy because I was like, that's my undertone is to live your life, live your dream life and go after what you want. So for example, instead of niching in a category, niching in a message would look like fashion versus changing the status quo through style. So somebody who's a fashion creator, of course, they kind of just stick to just fashion content. I think it would be harder for them to branch into food, for instance, or branch into health and fitness. But if people know you for changing the status quo through style, this could be through anything. That way you kind of have a disruptive vibe. It's kind of like, I know this person's always going to show me something new. This person's always going to kind of change how I see things, but they can do that through any category. They can do that through their workouts. They can do that through their outfits. They can do that through how they design their home. And that way you can branch into different things. But over time that will start to develop and you'll start to see what your overall message is. And I think other people will call it out to you too if you're posting enough. So make sure to do your challenge. And if you need a tool to plan all the content that you're filming, I recommend a few. Notion is my holy grail. I use Notion for literally all my platforms from TikTok to Instagram to YouTube. I plan all of my ideas on Notion. This really just keeps me organized. I I can access it through my phone. I can add people as collaborators. I use this for my podcast as well, just to plan out all the ideas on a calendar. As a social media manager, I use Later, Tailwind, Sprout, Airtable. These are all kind of schedulers that can post for you or just help you see all of your ideas on some kind of like Excel spreadsheet, something like that. I have a link below for Notion. It's in the description if you want to check it out. There's just some general themes I think could work for any piece of content. Anything that's too long and could lose people and the retention, just cut those things out. Make sure to have a really engaging hook. This is in the beginning of YouTube videos and short form videos. When it's a reel, when it's a TikTok, anything where people are swiping really fast, the first sentence needs to be something that really either speaks to a pain point, makes somebody interested, kind of leaves them on a cliffhanger, or gives them a concrete piece of information that makes them want to hear more. I like to focus on making it specific, urgent, or adding a little bit of drama. And this can go for anything. You can make any boring piece of content interesting by how you frame it. So the beginning is super interesting and the middle has all of these quick points that summarize what I'm trying to say. So let's practice and take a boring piece of content and make it interesting. Just say you filmed a day in your life, you just have a bunch of random clips of you doing things throughout your day. If you just put day in the life and had it going and there's nothing spectacular necessarily about what you're filming, you can find ways to make those specific or normal things really interesting. 
one way could literally be calling it out as normal and average and boring. That's very specific to a certain type of person who resonates with boring, average, normal. But you can also focus on something like this. If you just had a day in the life, you could frame it as a day in the life of a 26 year old working girl in tech. Now you've kind of added an element that people can resonate with, such as being in your 20s, working in tech. And if you're specific about the company, like a day in the life as a 26 year old girl working at Google, like that's even more interesting. Even if I don't resonate with that, I'm interested what life is like in Google. Another example is if you're making a video on how to communicate or how to present something. If you put how to communicate and present, it doesn't really give me intrigue. There's nothing urgent about it. I don't know how it applies to me. But if you make it specific and kind of focus on my pain point, you could title it like five reasons your presentation suck. Now I'm intrigued. And if I've ever resonated with my presentation sucking, I want to click this video and see why that is. If you're making a video about growing a community and you just had growing a community on the screen. That may not hook them in for long enough. So making it really specific, like what you need to attract your first 1000 members, that is a little bit more tangible. Now I can start to put where I am with what you're saying. And that is all I have for you today. I hope this really helped you get a grip on getting started. Let me know how it goes for you. Let me know if you have any more questions about this. I'm sure there's so much I can go more into detail about. It's just all hard to squeeze into one video. I dropped all of my digital products that I use with my actual real clients and things I've done in the past that have worked for me down in the description. They're all free, all easy to use resources. And I really hope this pushes you to get your content started. You never know how much could come from you just putting yourself out there, finding your people. You never know, so don't knock it until you try it. Let me know how your challenge goes and I will see you in the next video. Bye.